This is the first section um, of chapter four, which is on inequalities from the Further Pure One book. Now, um, you've uh, looked at how to solve um, inequalities before at GCSE, and the rule has always been when you solve an inequality, we need to uh, reverse the sign um, if we multiply or divide by a negative number by a negative number now let's say we don't know whether the number is positive or negative so say for example I was trying to solve this inequality x over x minus 3 is greater than 2 now it looks simple enough and you might say well let's multiply both sides by x minus 3 and uh, we could just do that couldn't we just do x greater than 2 times x minus 3 and you might say well what's wrong with that what's the problem well with an inequality um, you know we're, we're talking about a set of values for x now x can be any value well I suppose x can be any value apart from 3 because we don't want zero in the uh, denominator. But there are some values of x where this denominator is going to be positive and some where it's going to be negative. So for example, if x were equal to seven, for example, then what would happen is we would end up with a positive number in the denominator which means I don't need to reverse the sign yeah and in fact if I have any number greater than 3 in the denominator so if x is greater than 3 then the bottom will be positive but what if for example x was I don't know 1 now if x was 1 I would end up with a negative number in the denominator and in fact for any value of x which is less than 3 I would end up with a negative number in the denominator so I know that here the sign would stay the same and the question will stay like that but here I would need to flip it. Now we don't know whether to flip it or not. So to avoid this, we multiply both sides by the denominator squared. Okay, so if we multiply both sides by the denominator squared, it means that we're always going to be multiplying by a positive number. We don't need to worry about whether the sign needs to be reversed or not. Okay, so we'll be uh, multiply both sides by the denominator squared. So therefore, we will be multiplying by a positive number. So we don't need to reverse the sign. Okay, so sign doesn't need reversing because otherwise we wouldn't know when to reverse it when not to reverse it because there will be some cases where the denominator is positive some cases where the denom denominator is negative so this is what we do to get over that problem we multiply both sides by the denominator squared and in the process of solving that inequality using this algebraic method is very very similar to what you've done at GCSE. Okay, so it says use algebra to solve the inequality. So step number one is going to be multiplying both sides by the denominator squared. So I will have x squared over x minus 2 times by x minus 2 squared, the denominator squared, less than x minus 1 times by 
uh, the denominator squared. Okay, so that's our, our process. After that, the rest is sort of solving algebraically. Now, the first part, what I've got on the left, um, an x minus two, that will cancel out to give me x squared, x minus two is less than x plus one, x minus two all squared. Then we're gonna bring everything to one side so that we've got something greater than zero, something less than zero. And then we find a critical value. So you're used to doing this, finding the critical values. And then once we find the critical values, we can then use that to work out uh, what range of answers our, um, our solution should be in. And we'll probably use a sketch or something like that to help us out. So um, we probably don't want to be multiplying everything out now. We want to be looking to factorize things so that we can use that to work out what the critical values are. And then a sketch will tell us, right, do I need um, the bits above the x-axis or the bits below the x-axis? So I can take out x minus 2 as a factor of both terms. So factorize rather than just multiply brackets out. So in the brackets, I'll have x squared minus, and then it will be x plus 1. And then that needs to be multiplied by x minus 2. I'll take that as a factor, less than zero. So now we'll expand what's in the brackets because that will need factorizing. So in the brackets, we'll end up with x squared minus, and then those double brackets there will give us x squared uh, minus 2x plus x, so minus x minus 2 is less than zero. So from there, I can simplify what's in the brackets. So I'll have x squared minus x squared, that will be gone. Then minus negative x, which will be x, and minus negative two, which will be two. Right, so my critical values are two and minus two. And I just need to decide whether um, it's gonna be more than those values between those values. So this is where I draw a sketch to help me decide. So uh, critical values are at two and minus two. This is gonna be a, a quadratic once it's sketched like this. I'm interested for when it's less than zero. So less than zero is gonna be down here, greater than zero is there, equal to zero is here. So I can see that it's less than zero um, between these values here. So my final answer uh, for this is going to be that x is going to be between less than two and greater than negative two. So that's my set of solutions for uh, the original equation. Sorry, not equation, inequality. Okay, so this one here says find the values of x such that um, this inequality here where x can't be equal to one, it can't be equal to negative three because obviously it gets zero in the denominator. Express your answer in using set notation. So it might be a useful point here as a reminder about what your answers are going to look like using uh, set notation. So you would write x colon, and then here you would write what your inequality is. And then you might have the union symbol or the um, intersect symbol and there may be another part to your solution. And again, you'll write x colon and you'll write your inequality here. So when something's written in set notation, it needs to be written in this form. Also, we need to make sure that our answer set does not include either one of these values. So we might need to chop a bit of our answer off 
um, to make sure that those are not included in the solution set, even if like um, when we solve the inequality, we get those values minus one or minus three in the set, we need to make sure that they're excluded. And also with this question, you'll notice that uh, we've got two denominators. So we still do that process of multiplying both sides by the denominator squared. So we multiply both sides by x plus one, all squared, and x plus three, all squared. So let's do that first. So x over x plus one. So this is gonna be times by uh, x plus one, all squared. So this denominator squared and the other side squared x plus three all squared is less than or equal to um, so we've got two over x plus three so times by both denominators squared x plus one all squared and x plus three all squared next we bring everything to one side and also at the same time i'm going to cancel out any denominators so the first part here will just become x times by x plus one and then x plus three all squared and then i'm going to subtract from the other side i will have two times by so this will just become x plus three and then times by x plus one all squared less than or equal to zero so next I take out factors. Now I've got x plus one as a factor in both terms and I have x plus three as a factor. So that will be taken out as a factor or both of them. So I'll put x plus three and x plus one here. Like this and then I'll put in the brackets what that needs to be multiplied by. So for the first expression or oh, algebraic term there, I'll have um, x times by x plus three minus, and then I'll have two, and then this will get multiplied by x plus one, less than or equal to zero. Next, I'll multiply out what's in the square brackets. Um, so if I do that, I will have x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 2 less than or equal to 0 so um, from there I will have x plus 1 x plus 3 then the bracket just becomes x squared um, plus x minus 2 less than or equal to 0 so now I'm going to factorize this that quadratic and I'll carry that on up here at the top. So I think that factorizes this in it. So x plus one, x plus three. So that's going to be x, x. Now let's see, um, minus two and plus one. So I'm going to have plus two and minus one so i can see here i've got four critical values critical values are one three actually it's the reverse of those signs isn't it so the critical values are going to be negative one negative three negative two and one so now we need our sketch to help us decide uh, what we or which side of the graph we need the, the bit above or below the x-axis now what we do is we just mark our critical value so one negative one negative two negative three now we're doing the critical values for a quartic here now quartics are going to be like sort of u-shaped with like a bumpy bit in the middle or n-shaped with a bumpy bit in the middle and we need to look at the coefficient of x to the power 4 now the coefficient of x to the power 4 is positive so that means my quartic is going to be like a u-shaped thing like this with a, a bumpy bit like that and then go back up 
yeah, if the coefficient of my x to the power 4 was negative, then it would be like n-shaped with a bumpy bit in the middle. So all I need to do now is join the dots. So start from the top, go down, go up, go down, go up. So we've got like the U-shape, like this. I'm more interested in when it's less than or equal to zero. So we are interested in the part of the graph down here at the bottom. So let's use a highlighter pen. And so we're interested in this and we're interested in this. Now, we need to look back at the original question because there are numbers that which need to be excluded from our solution. If I was to draw on a number line, so um, and I'll put one here. So I do want to include one, but I don't want to include negative one. So I want this here written as an inequality. I'm going to put it in set notation. And then the other bit is between negative two and negative three, but you'll see in the original question, we exclude negative three. So I will have a closed circle here and an open circle here. And my inequality is going to look like this. So let's write this now in set notation. So let's write our solution. So remember in blue at the top, this is how we're going to write it. So X, it's going to be uh, the inequality is going to be less than minus two, less than or equal to minus two because you include minus two, but we don't include negative three, but we go down to negative three. So that's part of it. And it's that and a union of that and this. And X again. And the solution set is going to be less than or equal to one. We include one, but we don't include negative one. So this gives the final solution for this question written in set notation. So you should now be able to do exercise 4a on pages 95 to 96 of the textbook. Uh, just remember with these inequalities to avoid us multiplying both sides with what potentially could be a negative number. We multiply both sides uh, by the denominator squared. Denominator squared. Now there may be more than one, so it could be denominators if you've got two denominators. Uh, remember with our, if we need to give answers using set notation, it's going to look like this. Um, could be union or intercept, probably union mostly. Like this and um, make sure you look back at the original question and make sure you exclude any numbers that make the denominator zero in the original question. OK, so remember to exclude any values of X that make of X I've gone too fast of X that make the denominator equal to zero. So you exclude those from your solution, your set of solutions.